Hello everyone and welcome to another important video here in the channel. Today we're going to be talking about Udems. And if you guys want to get to this result right here, being able to extract some very nice textures, texture your element inside of Substance Painter and bring all of these amazing texture files into Maya to get the most pristine and high quality results, then you're not going to want to miss this whole process. In this process, I'm going to be showing you not only how to set up Udems, but also I'm going to be explaining why Udems are so important and what type of projects are you usually going to be like dealing with them now before we jump there i just have a very quick announcement as you guys know at the time of this recording our first contest is ongoing so if you want to participate we still have or you still have a chance to do so it's completely free and you can win a 100 there were some questions that were asked during the weekend about the specific requirements it is or it does need to be a game engine ready um weapon you can find more of this information in our discourse so make sure to join and we're not going to be asking the model from you we just want to see the final render and some works in progress to make sure that you have proper topology and proper textures so yeah, this video might be useful for some uh, texture tips, but you're probably not going to be able to use Udems. So let's go to the video. Very well. Let's start then with the basics of understanding what Udems are, why we're going to be using them, and how we're going to set them up. First things first, in the comments of this video, I'm going to leave a link to this PDF right here. This is not my PDF, credit where credit is due. This is from Timothy Dries, or Dries and he has a very nice write-up here on why textile density is so important. Textile density is the amount of surface that you're covering with your UVs, and it will have a very big impact on how your objects are going to be seen on a render, on a video game, on whatever type of like production you're going to be doing. It's not very often that you're going to be working with specific textiles. Like, not very often do I get clients telling me this object has to have the 60 texture resolution or whatever. But it is important to understand why textures are important. And Maya has a very cool tool to check what the current textile resolution of your object is. So, as you can see right here, this is my typical UV. This is the canon that I have right here. This has more cuts than what you might normally see on objects like this. But it's important because we're going to be doing something a little bit later with the UDIMs. So, so if we grab all of the islands right here and we go to the transform tab of our object and we check the transform information, you're going to see that we have this option right here, which is the tool to know what the textile density is for our object. Let's say we're going to be using 2K maps, so 2048, and I'm going to say get. And if I click on that button, we're going to get a four units of textile density, which means that we're going to have four pixels for every centimeter of surface that our object has. That's way too little. It's, it's very little resolution. And that means that if we were to texture this cannon, even if we try doing amazing textures, we're not going to have enough resolution. And I'm actually going to show you right now. Always keep our UV maps inside the one to one space. Usually that is the rule. But in this particular case, we're again going to break that rule and we're going to start moving all of these islands, scaling them up and occupying way more like space than what we normally would. In this case, I want to occupy 16 squares. So we're going to make this as big as roughly this size right here. And if I check the textile resolution now, we should have 15 or 16, which is four times more than what we have. So ideally, we're going to get the exact same texture that we have right here, but it's going to look four times more uh, refined or sharper than what we have right here. Now, we, we're not just going to do this. This is not the, the way to do it because um, we're going to have some issues. So the way we're going to be using UDIMS is as follows. First, you need to make sure that you have all of your UVs properly set up. If you don't know how to set up UVs, we do have a video that I'm going to link over here. And uh, you can check our five like tips to getting nice UVs. Once you have that, you're going to go to Tools. You're going to go to, sorry, Modify and then Layout. And here inside of Layout, we're going to turn off Shell Pre-Rotation and we're going to turn off Shell Pre-Scaling because ideally, we want our shells to remain like this. This is from, again, from a UV video where I make sure that everything is aligned in the same direction. Once I have this, I'm going to go all the way down here to this layout settings and I'm going to tell it, hey, we're going to be using 248 maps. I want to have four pixels of distance between each shell and I want to have four pixels of distance from the border of each of my UDIMs. And I'm going to have, in this case, four by four. So I, get, I want 16 UB tiles. You can change this. You can have like 10 by two or eight by two. It really doesn't matter as much. I'm going to do four by four just to follow this example that we have right here. And I'm going to hit apply. Once we do that, what's going to happen is we're going to get this distribution right here. 
my uh, software, in this case Maya, is going to try to pack everything into a 4x4 four four setup. And it's going to use the biggest islands, such as this one, as its reference point to try to get everything where it's supposed to be. Now, unfortunately, if I check this and I check the get information, we're going to get a lower number, 16. So in this particular case, this one's not working as, uh, as well as I was intending. And one of the reasons is the scale of the objects is changing. You can see these two guys right here are way bigger than these two guys right here. So that means that probably something like went wrong. So I'm going to grab everything again. I'm going to go to, uh, again, modify layout. I'm going to turn on the shared pre-scaling to preserve 3D ratios. And I'm going to try again. Hit apply. This should give me, as you can see, a way better distribution. Everything should be fitting nicely inside of this element. And if I, again, get my Udim resolution, we're going to get 15.5, which is almost 16. It's perfectly great. So now we have a huge texture map. If we wanted to make this an actual texture map, based on our 2k map this would be 2k 4k 6k 8k map it will be an 8k by 8k map but those maps even though it's possible to create them are very very big they're like gigabytes of, of the space so it's not easy to process that it's easier to break that down into smaller maps in order to get that resolution which is what we want now one important thing that we do need to do before going into um into uh, substance is we need to go and add a uv checker to our element to modify or check how the elements are looking and as you can see we get this now ideally every single part of your object should have the same density however you can see here that we have a little bit of a difference like these guys are a little bit bigger these guys are a little bit smaller so there's a little bit of a, of a problem there can we fix that of course if you go to uv and you go to uv shell for instance i can see that these ones are very small which means that they have more density and if we go to the uv editor and find where those are which apparently it's this one right here we can literally just scale them down and by doing that not that one this one there we go by scaling them down, did we not select it? Should be that one. Do we have the texture center? There we go. Ah, that's really weird. That's not working. But by scaling them down, we should be able to match the perfect like a uh, scale. It's not the be or it's not the end of the world if you don't have everything similar because we're gonna be using some tricks inside of Substance to get rid of the seam lines. So the difference in texture quality again is not gonna be um, that bad. But if you have one piece, let's say. Um, this one right here and the resolution of that piece is really 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 small should be over here like that one right there and if we make the resolution really 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 small what's going to happen is we're not going to have as much uh surf oh it's a it's a duplicated effect apparently there we go because uh, I had the other one. There we go. So as you can see, if we grab this shell right here and we make it really, really small, that's going to be a problem. So as long as the UB texels are really close, and this applies to a single object or multiple objects, as long as the UB texels are really close to each other, you're going to be fine. So in this case, this one, as uh, we just mentioned here, let's go number three. There we go. So with this done, our element is ready to go into Substance Painter for its uh, texturing process. And the texturing is going to be pretty much the exact same thing. The only thing that's going to change is that now we're not going to be working with only one texture. It's going to be all of this 16 textures. So this is definitely heavy for your GPU or your computer. That's why this process, this Judin process, is not used a lot in the indie productions because usually the equipments that we have in indie productions are not as powerful as what they have in AAA studios. And this is also not something that you're going to use a lot in video games. This is mostly used for like cinematics, commercials, and film. However, I have worked in certain projects. A couple of years ago, I worked for a Diablo Immortal commercial, and we did use Udems for this sort of stuff. So I'm going to export this selection. I'm going to export this as a Canon. Very important that you export it as an FBX. And we're going to be ready to go into Substance. So keep a mental image of this thing. Actually, don't keep in the mental image. Let's go back to 2K, which was our original um, like resolution. And let's focus on the, on the wood grain right here. I'm going to grab my snipping tool. And I'm going to save a copy so that you guys can compare the difference that UDIMS make. I'm going to now create a new file here inside of Substance. It's going to be a 2K. And very important, if we're using UDIMS, we need to use this option that says use UV tile workflow. We're going to select our Canon and we're going to hit open and hit OK. Save. Actually, no, we don't want to save that one. File, new, Canon, OK, 2K. OpenGL is fine because it's going to be going into Arnold and use UV tile workflow. And we discard. Perfect. So our canon is right here. We have 2K textures, but what the difference is now over here, you're gonna see all of our tiles. In this case, we should have about 12 tiles, if I, or sorry, 16 tiles, if I'm not mistaken. Wait, did I not save this thing properly? Let's make sure that we have the proper thing right here. 
Oh, this is an old one. What the hell? Give me one second. Let's redo that real quick. There we go. So as you can see now, we have our 16 tiles over here. All of these tiles. We got the 1001, 1002, 1003, and so on and so forth. 16 tiles at 2K, which again would be equivalent to an 8K uh, resolution or an 8K element. If we grab again a run wood and we go here to layers, we're going to be able to drag and drop this into layers and this will apply every single unit. So instead of just painting one slot, we're painting all of the things at the same time. Now I'm going to change this to triplanar projection again. And if you remember, we did a tiling, I believe it was a tiling of five. We're going to hit OK. And now if we look in here, look at that, we can actually see every single part of the detail it's pretty much the exact same like uh like marks and everything but now we're actually seeing the detail one thing i'm gonna do here is i'm gonna turn on the height information so that we can actually see all of the all of the damage of the wood right there i'm probably gonna bring it down so i'm gonna go to my height menu and just bring the height information a little bit lower so it's not as intense but look at how nicer and crisper this texture looks this is what's going to allow me to be able to generate and create textures that are going to look way way more intense and more important specifically on closer shots now you can see here as i move this thing it's updating a little bit slower why because it needs to think about 16 tiles so it's pretty much as if i was like texturing 16 different cannons at the same time so again as i mentioned it's a very cool process but it's definitely something that's a little bit complex as well I'm going to bring the roughness down a little bit so we can see a little bit more of that effect. Now, the way we're going to be getting rid of all of those seam lines, because we did need to cut the object a little bit more, is, again, by using triplanar projection. Let's go here into mask mode and let's select uh, object mode select all of these guys usually when working with UDEMs, i do recommend working at 2k resolution and then if you need to export everything at uh, 8k at the, or 4k at the at the end because if you try to work at 4k it can definitely be a little bit heavy i have a 3080 ti so i have enough like like video card memory and i can still struggle with uh, with this sort of things if you have like a like a 3090 or 4090 with 24 gigabytes of, uh, of texture space then you might be able to work with it but uh, in this particular case uh, i don't have that so i'm gonna go let's see for this metal bit over here for like a metal effect i'm gonna grab this metal grind which is a very cool one i can again change this view creation to triplanar projection here's a cool uh, trick you can copy this mask so I'm going to copy the mask over here, copy mask, and then I'm going to paste into mask. And then I'm going to right click and I'm going to invert the mask. That way I don't have to do any manual selection because the other one was the wood and it's a very, very easy way to, to just mask this thing. Now this thing, as I mentioned, it's a trade planner projection and we can increase the tiling to, let's say, a three. That way we're going to get a smaller like detail on the metal. We're going to be able to get a very, very nice effect. So look how close we can get to the object. Like this is how like nice the, the UDEM is going to allow us to work. We can get all the way to this point because it's going to allow us to, to generate a very cool effect. One thing that's very important, even though we don't have a high poly, we can still do the, do the bakes. So I can do like a 2K bake for everything. But keep in mind that we're going to be baking down 16 maps of each of all of the elements right here. So if I hit bake selected, it's going to go through each individual UDIM and it's going to do the normal, the world space normal, the ID, the ambient occlusion, the curvature, the position and the thickness. It's a lot of information. This is why this project working with UDIMs can get very, very heavy. Usually when I'm working with UDIMs, I try to keep my textile resolution at about 10 pixels per uh, like a unit. And, and that's a good amount, but there have been certain projects where I need to go like this. And again, on the Diablo project that I mentioned, um, we went to like 40 or 60 like UDIMs per character, which is definitely, definitely heavy, but require for really high productions like those, especially if you're working in things like 4K and the like. So um, let's just very quickly wait for this to finish and I'll show you a couple of generators to, to get this texture looking very, very nice. So we're going to go back to the painting information. As you can see, everything loads. And right now it's running fine. Uh, like, uh, as you can see on the cache disk usage, I'm at 96%. So that means that I'm running like very low on the, on the amount of memory. I'm not sure if it's the disk that's very getting or getting close to full or if it's the RAM, but it's, it's definitely taxing on your computer. So let's just add two very basic layers. Let's add a rust layer on top of everything. As you can see, it takes a little while to load all of the textures. I'm going to add a black mask and of course we're going to be adding a generator and we're going to use our dirt generator and this is going to give us a very nice like dirt effect on all of the areas where the ambient occlusion is more evident 
This one for rust, since it has a little bit of color, I usually like the multiply, which is going to turn everything a little bit darker. But again, if we uh, zoom in in just a second, let me change this to multiply. Let's try linear dodge. No. Multiply should be it. I'm not sure why it's not updating. But look at the detail on the rust. Like, that's a really, really, really nice detail. So we can go really clean in there. Again, the rust also needs to go into triplanar projection. Otherwise, we're going to get this sort of like uh, divisions right there. And even the generators, like the dirt generator, you might need to go here and use this option, which is triplanar, so that we get a nice like um, uh, like fade throughout the whole thing. Let's try overlay. For some reason, it's not... Oh, we're in height. <laughs> My bad. We're in height information. Multiply. There we go. So with the multiply, because overlay is gonna it's gonna give me a, like a weird color. Actually, not that bad. There we go. Now let's do a very like traditional metal edgeware. So I'm gonna add this uh like not the galvanized uh metal for let's just this metal, metal brushed. I'm gonna add a black mask, and I just wanna do this and the little wheels right here. So we had the galvanized metal over there. Again, of course, you need to use the tray planner projection to make sure that we don't get any, any, any weird effect. We're going to add a black mask. We're going to add a generator. And this is going to be, of course, the metal edgeware. Which is going to give us some very nice effects. This one, I'm going to multiply against the, the mask, the original mask. And it should give us a, a nice effect. Am I seeing it? Or do we need to increase the wear level? Uh, did I change something? Should be working right here. Metal brush. Is the color too close? Maybe the color is too close. Let's add a black mask. Oh, it should be there. Okay, let's add a generator and the metal edgeware. There we go. It's a little bit close. So I'm going to change this to linear dodge. There we go. And then I'm going to multiply this. And on the mask, I'm going to select that guy. There we go. So as you can see, it's hitting all of the all of the wheels and stuff very, very nicely. I'm not doing the fancy tricks that we normally do for the for the metal. In this case, I'm going to keep it like this so that we can appreciate all of the like little details. But again, like look at how clean and, and nice this looks. And once again, I can change this 2048 to 4K, which would essentially bring my texture from 8K all the way to like 32K or something like that. Because from 4K to 8K, it might seem like you're doing twice, but it's not twice. It's four times. Remember, anytime we're talking about textures, it's always exponential growth. Uh, I just want to do one more layer here. I'm going to go on top of the wood. I'm going to add a flat color. This is going to be a like scratches that I want to add. So let's just go for like a nice like pale wood right here. Let's increase the roughness and the height. I'm going to bring it down. I'm going to add a black mask and I'm going to add a fill layer. This is going to be a scratches. And you can see all of the scratches right there on the wood. Again, look at the detail. We get a very nice detail thanks to the fact that this map allows us to have this much amount of, of element. Even we're even getting some scratches on the on the cannon, which I think actually looks quite quite nice. So yeah, that's it for this part. Now we're gonna jump onto the exporting of these textures. So here's how we do it. We're gonna go to file, and I'm gonna go to uh, export textures. And we're going to export at 2K. Again, uh, as I mentioned, you can export this at 4K, but I don't want to go overboard with this element. I'm going to create a new folder here on the desktop called Canon. And here on the Canon folder is where we're going to export everything. In this case, we're going to export this for Arnold. So it's going to be Arnold AI standard. PNG is fine. And we're just going to hit export. And what's going to happen is we're going to be exporting all of the sets of elements that we need. Base color, emissive, height, metalness, normal, and roughness for one of each of the different UDEM sets. And we get all this full information right here. It's a lot. It's a lot of information. If we go to the desktop right here and we check the, um, the folder, you're going to see that we have a total of 200 megabytes for the whole element. Now, I know that we don't need the height information, so we can delete that. We're only going to need this, which is color, metalness, normal, and roughness. That should be more than enough. If we want a displacement, we can use height. In this case, it's totally fine. But still, like this is almost 191 megabytes of texture information. It's a lot, but it's a lot smaller. 191 megabytes is a lot smaller than a 1K texture. Usually, one, a 1 4K texture, it's about 50 megabytes per each image. So that would be like just one set of 4K textures would be 50 megabytes. 
per texture, so that's 200 megas. It would be like one gigabyte if we wanted to make this a 4K texture. So again, UDIMs are a very good way to do it. The only thing that's a little bit tricky about UDIMs is the connection, but in Maya, it's actually very simple. We're just gonna go to Maya. I'm gonna sign, or actually, I'm gonna use the Substance plugin. I'm gonna go over here to Substance. I'm gonna use this button that says Apply Workflow to Materials. And in this map, I'm gonna go and grab only the first one, the one that says 1001 of the base color, of the metalness, of the normal map and of the roughness and i'm gonna say select it's gonna automatically like notice the flag of the name and it's gonna connect it i'm gonna hit apply and it's gonna create a new a new shader that new shader is usually gonna be an ai standard so it's this one ai standard surface 3 and this one if you go into your hyper shade you're gonna see that this material that we have right here already has everything connected the only thing we need to change is we need to go to each specific one of these guys go to the uv tiling mode and change this to you them okay this is the way we're gonna tell it hey this is the first of how many textures we have in this case 16. so we change that to you them and that's it we do the same for the material so we go to you thems we do the same for the normal we change this to you them and we do the roughness and we do you them and there we go now, you're not going to see them on your viewport because it needs to load them into memory. That's why we get this like red button right here. My advice, if you don't need it, don't do it because, again, this is extra memory. And if you're going to do it, try to do it a low quality such as 1K and only do it for the color just so that you see where things are. And if I generate a preview, now the textures are going to load. I'm going to start seeing some of the textures like the wood elements over here. You might need to load everything else, but you can see how they're right there. And don't worry too much about this because this is only important at render time. A lot of people, when they're working on this sort of things, they use this little button right here, which is the default material. And you're just going to see everything gray. And then in render time, things are going to look good. Now, I do have my own little like setup right here, except for the uh, HDRI. I think this one's missing. So let me just like bring another one right here like this at Dancing Hall. There we go. And let's go to our camera. And let's go panels, look to select going to change the resolution of this thing so let's go for a traditional full hd so really close in here like this and i'm just going to move this thing down a little bit so it looks like this thing's like sitting on top of it everything else should be properly like uh, calibrated so i'm going to save this thing real quick and of course one other thing that i'm going to do is i'm going to go to my system i'm going to be using gpu and we're going to hit render. So I'm going to hit render. And the first thing that's going to happen, remember this, the first thing that's going to happen is that all of the textures are going to be converted to TX files, which is going to take a little while. So let's hit render. Okay, so Maya crashed and it was a little bit of expected. I actually, I think I asked it a little bit too much. I, I had other things open, such as substance. So here's another trick that we can do. Uh, the, the whole thing is already set up and everything, but it, it was trying to do the conversion at the same time it was doing the render. That's usually not ideal. So we can go to Arnold Utilities and to the Texture Manager over here. I'm going to refresh and let's see if we got any over here. Should be working fine. Do we have the UDEM set up? Yes, the UDIM setup is right there. So technically, on the utilities of the texture files, there we go. We're going to be processing all of the textures. So again, I'm just going to give it a, a little while for it to process the whole thing, and then we're going to shoot the render. And here we go. This is the result of the render. It's just a normal full HD render, but with 16 UDIM tiles at 2K resolution. And you can see the difference on the effects that we have right here. On top of this, we can, of course, add a denoiser to make sure that we remove all of the noise. And again, you might not notice too much of a difference if this was just the final shot and we did a single 4K texture. You might get a very similar result. But the, the plus of this thing, the big uh, like advantage, is that we can make this very cool close-ups like let's say right around here and if we render now we're going to be able to really see all of the detail all of the scratches all of the roughness like all of the things that we've created are going to be seen at this particular point so hopefully this answers not only the the question of what UDIMs are, but someone on the last portfolio review, which by the way, our new portfolio review is available in case you want to participate in October. But on the last one, they were asking, like, I've seen some renders that look really, really, really nice. What is it? Probably UDIMs. They probably use quite a bit of texture resolution to make sure all of their materials and all of their elements were looking as nice as possible. So yeah, this is it, my friends. I know it's a little bit of a technical topic, 
it's not used everywhere but it's really powerful it's especially used you're gonna see this a lot in big elements so imagine you are watching a movie and you're watching like this huge uh, like a mecha or whatever like huge robot in pacific rim they're probably gonna be using units because when you have the actor by the side of the robot you don't want parts of the armor to look pixelated so you're gonna have like ridiculous amount of texture resolution to make sure they look as nice as possible Hopefully this tip looks uh, or works for you, my friends, and I might be doing another video soon about this cannon, showing you some other tips and techniques that we can use instead of Substance Painter to really utilize all of the information that we have in our UDIMs. If that's something that you guys are interested in, let me know in the comments, please. And if you managed to get all the way to the end of the video, thank you very much for your support. We're really close to our next goal, so your subscription, your like, your share, all of that is really, really helpful for us. And thank you again for being part of this amazing community. Don't forget to join our Discord. I'll be seeing you back very, very soon. Bye-bye.